Introducing YouTube memberships, a fun way to support the channel while getting some exclusive perks. Click the join button to become a member now and get benefits like badges next to your name on videos, behind the scenes photos, advantages during the live trivia game, discounts on merchandise, private one-on-one -on -one video chats, the ability to request future video topics, and exclusive 8-10 to 10 minute videos on the history of the NFL. And now, on with our feature presentation. Man, the Simpsons really do predict everything. In case you haven't heard the news by now, the Denver Broncos kind of stink. They started off 0-2, and by no means did they play well, but there were at least some glimmers of hope. They got off to a hot start both times, and maybe they were a pass interference call away in the second game against the Commanders, from at the very least, forcing overtime. Sure, the defense absolutely stunk at both of those games, allowing 35 points to the Commanders, while allowing the Commies to score 31 points in a six-drive stretch at one point. But at least there was something there. Or so it felt like. And then, Sunday happened, in a game that will probably live on in history as the Miami Massacre. At least, that's what I'm calling it. Because we saw something on Sunday that most of us have probably never seen before. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that it might never happen again. The Dolphins dropped a 70 burger. The Dolphins dropped 70 on the Enver Broncos. There was no D. I'm not sure if anyone predicted the Broncos to win against the Miami team that entered this game as one of the top three in football. But I don't think anyone in their right mind saw this coming. Not even 90 seconds into the game, the Broncos already allowed seven points. And that was a bad omen of things to come. Because when the final whistle mercifully sounded, the Dolphins had put up 70 points. Winning by a final score of 70-20, to 20, despite putting the backups in for the vast majority of the fourth quarter. The Dolphins picked up a whopping 726 yards of offense. You heard that right. 726 yards of offense, or an average of 10.2 yards per play. For some perspective, this means that, on average, the Dolphins were picking up enough yards to get a first down on first and 10. And that average would be higher if they didn't kneel it at the end of the game instead of going for the NFL record. For some more perspective, the Tennessee Titans this season have 720 yards. The New York Jets have 675 yards. If the Dolphins didn't even show up the first two weeks, they would still not have the fewest or even the second fewest yards in the league. If ever the phrase ugly with a capital U applied, it was this game. Because this was a beatdown for the ages. We've seen blowouts before, but we haven't seen a team drop 70 since 1966, before the NFL and AFL merged, before a Super Bowl was played, before Man Walked on the Moon, and before the Beatles released Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. When Paul McCartney sang Getting Better on that album, he clearly was not referring to the Broncos, because the only good thing from that game for them was when it was finally over. Obviously, this game was bad. This whole season has been bad for the Broncos. But that raises the question, just how bad has it been? And is there any hope whatsoever for the Broncos to right the ship and actually turn things around? The answer to that question is a resounding no. Because the Broncos are in some absolutely awful territory with how they've started this season off. To a point where I think we can officially say it. The 2023 Denver Broncos are historically bad. How it works is like this. I looked at every team in NFL and AFL history since 1936 to start the season off allowing an average of 40 points per game, because that's what the Broncos have done, as through three games, they've allowed 122 points. The 1936 cutoff is not an arbitrary year. That was the first year that every team played the same number of games, as prior to 1936, you had unbalanced schedules where some teams played six games before another team even played their second. 
and some teams play 14 games in a season, while others play 9. The 1936 cutoff is necessary to ensure a level playing field. And I talked about that last week when I said that the Giants were historically bad, which you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner. I looked at every team to allow just about 6 touchdowns a game on average, or 5 touchdowns and 2 field goals, or however you want to look at it. Through the first 3 games, if you allowed 120 points or more, or 40 points per game, I made a note of it. Then, I looked at how you finished the season, and whether you were able to rebound in any way whatsoever, both as a team and as a defense. And folks, the results are not pretty. If you're expecting some sort of mid-season turnaround where the Broncos get it together, you might want to stop expecting it. Sure, it will get better, because I don't think it's possible to allow 70 points in a game again, but that's only by default. It's not really going to get any better. There have been six teams, excluding the Broncos, that allowed 40 or more points per game through their first three games, and all six of them have a common theme that you'll be able to pick up on very quickly. Prior to the Broncos, the last team to allow 40 points per game through their first three was the 2019 Miami Dolphins, oddly enough. They got off to just about the worst possible start to a season imaginable, as they lost their first game 59-10 to the Baltimore Ravens in humiliating fashion. Then followed that up with a 43-0 loss to the New England Patriots, and in a game that was actually somewhat competitive for about 40 minutes, lost 31-6 the following week to the Dallas Cowboys. Through their first three games, the Dolphins allowed 133 points, or 44.3 points per game. As for how the Dolphins did the rest of the season, well, they didn't do great. To be fair, I don't think anyone even expected the Dolphins to be remotely good entering 2019, as that roster was completely gutted down to its barest parts. So the fact that they went 5-11, or 5-8 over their final 13 games, was actually legitimately impressive. But the defense? Yeah, the defense was not great. When the season ended, the Dolphins ended it allowing 494 points, or 30.9 points per game, which was the worst defense in football out of all 32 teams. Tough to do much worse than ranking dead last and nearly allowing 500 points. How they upset the Patriots on the road in the final week of the season, and the domino effect that created with the Chiefs' dynasty happening, blows my mind. But yeah, the defense stung to start the season off, and it very clearly did not get any better as the year went on. And then, the last team to do it prior to the Dolphins? We've got to go all the way back to 1968, when this team right here, the Pittsburgh Steelers, accomplished this feat. Yeah, before the Steel Curtain defense, you had the Swiss Curtain defense, because the Steelers were Swiss cheese to start off the 1968 campaign. After three weeks, the Steelers were 0-3, thanks to losing 34-20 in the first week against the New York Giants, losing 45-10 to to the Los Angeles Rams in Week 2, and losing 41-7 in Week 3 against the Baltimore Colts. Add it all up, and that's 120 points on the dot through the first three weeks, or exactly 40 points per game. So did things get better for the Steelers? I mean, yes they eventually created a dynasty. But in terms of 1968, no, they did not. They ended the season with a 2-11-1 record, and ended the year allowing 397 points, or 28.4 points per game, which was dead last in the league. Two teams, and both times, the team finished the season with a really bad record and the worst defense in football. Spoiler alert, this is going to continue. Because before the Steelers did it, you had the 1966 New York Giants accomplishing this feat. I talked about how bad the Giants were that season, and how that season was a disastrous coaching job from head coach Ali Sherman. So if you want to learn more about that, you can do so by clicking the card in the upper right corner. To start off the 1966 season, the Giants allowed 34 points in a tie to the Pittsburgh Steelers then followed that up by allowing 52 points to the Dallas Cowboys in a 52-7 loss, in a game that you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner, and followed that up by allowing 35 points in a 35-17 loss to the Philadelphia Eagles. 
three games and 121 points allowed, or just over 40 points per game. Things did not get better for the Giants during the season. In fact, they actually got worse, seeing as this was the Giants team that, in Week 12 against Washington, allowed 72 points. See, Broncos, you're not the only ones to do it and allow a 70-burger. You're not in good company, seeing as the Giants ended the season with a worse record in football at 112-1 and, and allowed 501 points, or 35.8 points per game, finishing with the worst defense in the league and one of the worst defenses ever, but at least you're not the only one. It happens. Maybe it happens once every 60 years, but it happens. For the final three teams on the list, it was so long ago that there is no footage available. So here's some more footage of whatever the heck the Broncos defense was doing on Sunday against the Dolphins to truly put into perspective just the awful company that this Broncos team is in. In 1961, the Oakland Raiders got off to an abysmal start for the season. They started the season off 0-3, and were so bad through two weeks that they fired their head coach, which the Broncos probably should have done with regards to Vance Joseph. In Week 1, they lost 55-0 to the Houston Oilers, and followed that up with a 44-0 shutout loss to the San Diego Chargers in Week 2. The third week was closer, but was still a loss, as they were 0-3 after a 42-35 loss to the Dallas Texans. Three weeks, at 141 points allowed, or 47 points per game. That's nearly seven touchdowns a game. Spoiler alert, when you allow 47 points per game through the first three weeks, your defense will usually stink for the rest of the season and won't turn it around. The team ended the year allowing 458 points, or 32.7 points per game which was fairly comfortably the worst defense in the eight-team AFL. Then, if we go back to the NFL, Washington did this in 1954, as they started the season off with an 0-3 record, thanks to a defense that couldn't get off the field. In Week 1, they lost 41-7 to to the San Francisco 49ers. They followed that up in Week 2 with a 37-7 loss to the Pittsburgh Steelers, and followed that up with a 51-21 loss to the New York Giants. Three weeks into the season, and Washington had allowed 129 points, or 43 points per game exactly. Things did not get better, including a loss later in the season against the Cleveland Browns, where they lost 62-3, while getting outgained 515-64 in total yardage. Washington ended the season with a 3-9 record, and by allowing 432 points, or 36 points per game, they ended the season ranked dead last in the 12-team NFL in total scoring defense. And finally, the first team to do this under the balanced schedule format was the Baltimore Colts back in 1950. It was not the same Baltimore Colts team that later became the Indianapolis Colts. It was a completely different franchise. Yes, it's complicated. This Colts team would fold after the season was over. However, through three weeks, their defense was folding pretty badly, as they lost 38-14 to Washington, 31-0 to Cleveland, and 55-13 to the Chicago Cardinals. That's 124 points allowed through three games, or just over 41 points per game. Things got significantly worse for them as the season went on, as they had a game against the Giants where they allowed 55, a game against the Lions where they allowed 45, a game against the Yanks where they allowed 51, and worst of all, a game against the Rams where they allowed 70 points. By the time the season ended, the Colts were 1-11, and ended the season by allowing 462 points, or 38.5 points per game, which was, shocker, the worst defense in the league. So that is the company that the Denver Broncos are in. You had Miami in 2019, Pittsburgh in 1968, New York in 1966, Oakland in 1961, Washington in 1954, and Baltimore in 1950. Those were the only six teams to do it, and now, Denver is the seventh. Of the previous six, all six of them ended the season with the worst defense in football. Of the previous six, they combined to allow on average, over the course of the season, 33.7 points per game, 
so the average went down by about a touchdown compared to the first three games, but was still abysmal in every sense of the word. And of the previous six, combined, their record on the season was 14-66-2, or a winning percentage of just 18.2%. What this means for the Broncos is that they're expected to win three games if you multiply that percentage over the course of a 17-game season. The numbers say that the Broncos, if history is anything to go off of, will win three games, will allow 33.7 points per game, and will have the worst defense in all of football. Good job, Denver. Good job bringing Vance Joseph back. I doubt he's having the time of his life right now. On one hand, there is reason to believe that this team behind me right here, the Denver Broncos, will break the trend set before them with the previous six teams in terms of their record. Seeing as the Broncos, unlike those other six teams, actually have somewhat of a competent offense through three weeks. It's not great, but it's something. It's better than a lot of people thought it would be. But on the other hand, the Broncos are the only team on this list that actually allowed 70 points in either of their first three games. So, uh, make of that what you will. There's no real way to put a positive spin on this. It's bad. It's really, really bad, and I think you all know that. The Broncos are in trouble. The Broncos went from having a great defense to having a historically bad defense by not just their standards, but by the standards of the entire league. And only took them one season to do it. Yes, it's early. And yes, there are 14 games left. But history is not on their side whatsoever. If history is any indication, the Broncos are in for a very long season. I started the episode with a line from The Simpsons, so it was only fitting I ended with one as well. Because if history is any indication, I think Bronco fans are going to be feeling as frustrated as Homer Simpson. And they'll be saying a lot of this. Aw, the Denver Broncos! You said it, homie. You said it. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jj9shop.com and be sure to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL trivia for cash prizes at 9 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of college football, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.